convicted on all counts. Uh, one of those counts is having having to do with lying about his contacts with the Trump campaign and Donald Trump. That was the sixth count. And then the seventh count, which he was convicted on, was the intimidation uh, of, of, of Randy Credico, who was an important witness uh, for the prosecution. He eventually wound up cooperating with members of Congress. Uh, and there are all these colorful and really outlandish crazy texts between Randy Credico and Roger Stone and Roger trying to say things to get him not to cooperating, not to cooperate, and then making a reference to uh, The Godfather 2. All that uh, came out in court. Uh, what's going on now uh, is that prosecutors actually were asking for the judge to detain uh, Roger Stone. She, uh, we're just being told, has decided that she's going to let him sit out his uh, awaiting sentence, that she's going to allow him to remain free. Mr. Cohen pled guilty to two campaign finance charges, one for causing an unlawful corporate contribution and a second one for personally making an excessive personal contribution, both for the purpose of influencing the 2016 election. In addition, what he did was he worked to pay money to silence two women who had information that he believed would be detrimental to the 2016 campaign and to the candidate and the campaign. In addition, Mr. Cohen uh, sought reimbursement uh, for that money by submitting info invoices to the candidate's company, which were untrue and false. They indicated that the reimbursement was for services rendered for the year 2017 when in fact those invoices were a sham. He provided no legal services for the year 2017, and it was simply a means to obtain reimbursement for the unlawful campaign contribution. Tonight, the ongoing Russia investigation has reached President Trump's innermost circle. Trump's former national security advisor, Michael Flynn, says that he is cooperating with the special counsel's probe into possible cooperation between the Trump campaign and the Russian government. Flynn pled guilty to repeatedly lying to the FBI, including making false statements about his December 2016 conversations with Russia's then ambassador to the U.S., Sergei Kislyak. According to the statement of offense, Flynn lied when he told the FBI he did not discuss sanctions with Kislyak. On the same day that President Obama expelled Russian diplomats from the U.S. and boosted sanctions on Moscow in retaliation for Russia's meddling in the presidential election. Flynn also sought Russia's help during the transition to block a U.N. Security Council vote that the Obama administration was abstaining on. The White House said late Friday morning, quote, nothing about the guilty plea or the charge implicates anyone other than Mr. Flynn. However, Court documents make clear that Flynn was not acting alone. According to prosecutors, Flynn communicated with senior members of the president's transition team about the conversations and in at least one instance was directed by transition officials to reach out to Russia. Tonight, CNN has learned that the president's son-in-law, Jared Kushner, is the very senior member of the presidential transition team identified in today's court documents. Kushner directed Michael Flynn to contact the Russian ambassador and other countries regarding the U.N. Security Council vote on Israeli settlements. This according to sources familiar with the matter. This tells me that Bob Mueller's team has gotten some information from Michael Flynn that they believe to be critical uh, in their investigation going forward. Now, whether that's an investigation against Trump, whether that is an investigation on Jared Kushner or Little Don or uh, uh, Manafort or whoever it is, then, then it tells me that they believe that he's got credible information that is, that is essential. Flynn is the closest person to the president to plead guilty in the ongoing Russia probe. Former campaign foreign policy advisor George Papadopoulos also pled guilty to lying about his contacts with Russian officials. Trump's former campaign chairman Paul Manafort and his deputy Rick Gates pled not guilty after being indicted last month on charges related to their lobbying work for the Ukraine government. Flynn's guilty plea believes lies President Trump's repeated denials of any contacts or involvement between his campaign and Russia. In your view, has the president lied about what communications his team had with Russia? Well, uh, abundantly <laughs> and frequently and uh, 
in, in about just about every way, uh, but most significant in um, denying that this happened, saying it's a hoax. Donald J. Trump to be the next president of the United States. Flynn was one of Donald Trump's closest and most ardent public supporters during the campaign. And after the election was selected by the president to be national security advisor. However, after just 25 days, he resigned that position when it was revealed that he had misled Vice President Pence about the Kislyak conversations. The acting attorney general at the time, Sally Yates, then delivered this stunning warning to the White House. We believed that General Flynn was compromised with respect to the Russians. Today, Flynn acknowledged that his actions were wrong, but denied that he was blackmailed by the Russians, saying in a statement, quote, it has been extraordinarily painful to endure these many months of false accusations of treason and other outrageous acts. Such false accusations are contrary to everything I have ever done and stood for. After the court proceeding, Flynn went immediately to the home of his son, Michael Flynn Jr. The pain aide Rick Gates has just pleaded guilty to two criminal charges in Robert Mueller's wide-ranging investigation into Russia's election meddling. Uh, Gates revealing in a letter to family and friends that he had a quote-unquote change of heart and would not be fighting these charges against him. Uh, this guilty plea is a sign that Gates is now willing to offer up incriminating information against the former campaign chairman, Paul Manafort. So Shimon Prokopez is with me, CNN Crime and Justice reporter Evan Perez. Our justice correspondent just uh, came out of court. So uh, Evan Perez, let me begin with you. Tell me what happened. Well, Brooke, it was a surreal scene. You know, I was here when Rick Gates was charged, and, uh, you know, the scene was quite different today. He sat quietly, uh, listened as the judge uh, read from these court documents, and then he said, yes, Your Honor, repeatedly, as she asked him if he understood that what he was doing was pleading guilty and he was giving up his right uh, to certain right to certain rights, exactly, uh, especially the fact that he might not be able to appeal uh, this, the, the sentence that he's about to get. He said he understood, for instance, uh, that he his cooperation with special counsel Mueller would affect his sentence. And uh, at this point, the judge told him that he could get between 57 and 71 months in prison. He is a man in his 40s, uh, Brooke. He has kids. Uh, this is something that's been weighing on him. Uh, we know that he's been in talks with the special counsel's office for well over a month uh, or, or over whether or not to, to do a, a plea agreement. And it, it is during one of those, uh, those meetings with the special counsel on February 1st during what's known as a proffer uh, agreement meeting uh, that he lied according to the special counsel. That's one of the two charges that he pled guilty to. One of them is to defraud the United States. The second one is a false statement charge. And again, that, that false statement according to the government came, and, and Rick Gates now uh, admits, came uh, during a meeting with the government earlier this month where he was uh, being interviewed by the FBI and the special counsel as part of a prospective plea agreement. Now, um, we do have a statement that just came in from uh, Paul Manafort, uh, and he says, quote, uh, notwithstanding that Rick Gates pled guilty, I continue to maintain my innocence. I had hoped and expected my business, part business colleague would have the strength to continue this battle to prove our innocence. For reasons yet to surface, he chose to do otherwise. This does not alter my commitment to defend myself against the untrue piled up charges contained in the indictment indictments against me. Brooke, he's referring to obviously the fact that not only does he face 12 uh, counts here in this court here in Washington where I'm standing but also 32 counts that were filed just yesterday uh, in Alexandria Virginia Paul Manafort maintains his innocence. Sentenced George Papadopoulos to 14 days in prison. He is also facing a fine. This coming after Papadopoulos expressed some regret for lying to investigators and his attorney in court cast his client as a naive fool. George Papadopoulos, the former foreign policy advisor to the Trump campaign, is now the first member of the president's team to be sentenced as part of the Russia investigation. The historic distinction far from the national impact the 31-year-old had hoped to have. According to the sentencing memo from Papadopoulos' lawyers, he misled investigators to save his professional aspirations and preserve a perhaps misguided loyalty to his master.
That master and the administration quick to dismiss the former foreign policy advisor's role. It was a volunteer position, and again, uh, no activity was ever done in an official capacity. I have no idea why people would think that a volunteer coffee boy like George Papadopoulos would get to the top of this campaign. It was Papadopoulos who revealed to a diplomat that he had been told the Russians had thousands of emails about Hillary Clinton. That helped set off an FBI investigation that eventually became Robert Mueller's special counsel probe. During the 2016 campaign, the young advisor attended a meeting of Trump's new national security team, including Donald Trump and Jeff Sessions. Papadopoulos pitched a meeting between then-candidate Trump and Russian President Vladimir Putin. When the FBI asked him about his Kremlin-linked contacts seeking to meddle in the presidential election. What Papadopoulos did was lie, and that's on him, not on the campaign, and we can't speak for that. In court documents, the defense pleaded his ignorance. To say George was out of his depth would be a gross understating. His wife got even more technical. He didn't lie because of the nature of his relationship with Russia, because he didn't have any relationship with Russia. He lied about the date. But the prosecution says Papadopoulos was not just a nervous novice, but an uncooperative one. The defendant did not provide substantial assistance, and much of the information provided by the defendant came only after the government confronted him. Judge in D.C. piling on to Paul Manafort's prison time today bringing the former Trump campaign chairman sentenced to seven and a half years in a federal penitentiary. Here's your flag. After being convicted of financial crimes in Virginia, Manafort was already sentenced to nearly four years behind bars. Today, Judge Amy Berman Jackson piled 43 months on top of that for charges Manafort pleaded guilty to in D.C., conspiracy against the U.S. and conspiracy witness tampering. Dressed in a suit instead of an inmate jumpsuit, Manafort showed little emotion as he spoke from a wheelchair. I am sorry for what I've done, he said. Let me be clear, I accept the responsibility for the acts that caused me to be here today. In a plea for leniency, Manafort said, Your Honor, I will be 70 years old in a few weeks. Adding, please let my wife and I be together. Manafort's lawyer also painted his client in a sympathetic light claiming, but for the 2016 election, Manafort would not be in this situation. But Judge Jackson blasted that approach to the case, saying, I'm sorry I got caught is not an inspiring plea for leniency. The judge spoke directly to Manafort about his foreign lobbying, saying he lied to Congress and the American people. If the people don't have the facts, democracy doesn't work. She later rebuked Manafort for lying to prosecutors after his arrest, noting, court is one of those places where facts still matter. Judge Jackson also took issue with the assertion from Manafort's team that the charges Manafort faced weren't linked to Russian collusion. She dismissed those claims as a non sequitur in this case, calling them just one more thing that's inconsistent with the notion of any genuine acceptance of responsibility. But with the possibility of a presidential pardon still on the table, Manafort's attorney was quick to step outside the courthouse and reiterate one of President Trump's favorite talking points, no collusion. Judge Jackson, uh, conceded that there was absolutely no evidence of any Russian collusion in this case. So that no makes court two courts. 